All right, Nick, SMI College Football Show, episode number two. The first episode, huge success, so thank you for everybody that watched. But uh, today, let's talk about the Old Miss Rebels. This is a team uh, with Lane Kiffin at the helm that, you know, they were very impressive last year. We liked Matt Corral coming out of college. Uh, you know, a really exciting player to watch. Old Miss is an exciting team to watch. And uh, we're about to get into a story, you know, kind of breaking down the roster, breaking down the schedule, an overview right before the season uh, is about to start. So what better time to break down the Old Miss Rebels, Nick? But before we get into the story, Old Miss, I hear down in Oxford, you've never lost a party. And so the games down there, must be incredible. Maybe we'll come check one out this year. But uh, let us know in the comments below, what game are you planning on going to this season? There's a lot of great games, especially getting up to the end of the season. Old Miss has some real big opponents. So just let us know in the comments below, what game are you planning on going to this season? But uh, Nick, let's get into the Old Miss Rebels. Yeah, so this is uh, the story is according to the Mississippi Clarion Ledger. Uh, it says Ole Miss has got actually some of their top four most bold takes, um, bold prediction for Ole Miss. So let's go through a couple of big ones. Uh, the first one is the Rebels will rank in the top five in the country in October. Uh, according to the report here, Ole Miss's schedule is set up to keep the hype machine rolling well beyond the preseason using ESPN's SP Plus, a metric built around efficiency and productivity and yada, yada, yada. The Rebels are projected to be favored in each of their first eight games. It'd be surprising if the Rebels didn't start 4-0 with non-conference games against Troy, Central Arkansas, Georgia Tech, and Tulsa. Then the Rebels' four, first four SEC games are against Kentucky, Vanderbilt, Auburn, and LSU. Uh, after that, they have to wrap it up with some tough games. They've got uh, Texas A&M, Arkansas, Alabama, and then, of course, uh, Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl. A little tougher stretch uh, to finish out the season, obviously. There's a really good chance, according to the, the report here, that Ole Miss will be in the top five, which will be absolutely incredible. First time, I think, in a, in a number of years, probably since the Land Sharks day, Land Shark days with that defense since they were ranked that high. What do you think of that report? What do you think of Ole Miss with the schedule, just starting it right out of the gate? Uh, I've, I've really always liked uh, Ole Miss. I really liked uh, uh uh, Robert Nikimdichi, I think that's how you say his yeah. name. Uh, however you say it, uh, he was a really a uh, talented guy who came out. He didn't really pan out in the NFL, uh, but I like the team. Uh, when when he was playing over there, uh, I think they're a very uh interesting program. And you know, as loved and hated as Lane Kiffin is, I like Lane Kiffin down in Old Miss because as much as Old Miss has never lost a party, I don't think Lane Kiffin has ever lost a party either. He seems like the kind of guy that, uh, you know, really kind of fits their culture down there. Uh, you know, a, a really outspoken vocal leader of the team. But, uh, the, like you said, going through that, uh, schedule, I like in the schedule for Old Miss, they start out early with some less tough opponents. Obviously you can't underestimate anybody. Uh, but, you know, going Troy, Central Arkansas, Georgia Tech, Tulsa. Uh, and then your real big test is against Kentucky on October 1st, who Kentucky is uh, quite a couple good players, especially their their quarterback seems to be really talented. Uh, and if you can win that game, then you're feeling good. You know, you're feeling really strong. And then you get Vanderbilt. Auburn, who who knows how Auburn LSU are going to be this year? That those are shakeup games later to be seen during the season. But like you said, their final stretch very tough. Um, but I like their chances, and like you said, they have a chance uh, to be top five. And I think if they're in that in the top five, you know, they have a chance to potentially make it to into the college football playoffs if everything falls their way. Don't you think? Well, the big game, obviously, is they get Alabama in Oxford at home November 12th after a bye week. So they, they go to College Station and A&M, and then they get a week off. That's a, obviously, they go to Death Valley, the real Death Valley in LSU, and then they go out, follow that up, and they have to go to College Station. That's a brutal two-game stretch. If they're able to survive that, even if they have just one loss, if they're Splitting able to get through that. Splitting would be really nice. Splitting that would, would, would be huge. 
obviously if they win both would be preferred, but if they get the tide at home and Ole Miss historically over the past 10, 15 years has given Alabama some fits. I think I think what Lane Kiffin put 49 or 56 up on them a couple of years ago, not so hot at last year against Alabama, but I think that, you know, just it's Alabama, right? I mean, there's only so many times you can only so much you can do against that team, but they get Alabama at home later in the year. I, I, I tell you what, that could be a game that could literally decide who goes to the SEC championship game. And then, you know, obviously you go to the championship game and probably against Georgia, that's another tough game. Every game gets tough at that point. But the window is there. And I think the real question for Ole Miss, working through the schedule, and you know, you see all these winnable games and things like that. You brought up Kentucky's quarterback. The Ole Miss quarterback position is sort of the, the real question mark here. And the guy, the, the transfers from Southern Cal, Jackson Dart, I think he's, you know, right now, I think he's the guy who's going to start the year. Uh, the report from the Clarion Ledger said, you know, one quarterback's going to start the entire year. That was the other bold prediction. I think it's got to be Dart. Dart was the big recruit, big guy coming out of Southern Cal. Matt Corral, by the way, Southern California guy. So some connection there. Lane Kiffin, coached at USC, Southern California connection there. I mean, there's enough th- w- there things there to think that'll just work out. What do you think? You think it's a Jackson Dart uh, role to lose or, or, or what? You think Altamar's got a chance? Yeah, I think Dart has, you know, the uh, higher ceiling uh, as potential of his ability to potentially be, you know, the better quarterback overall. And he kind of reminds me of, and this will go back a little bit till I was telling you the team that I like to watch from Old Miss. His looks kind of remind me. Do you remember Bo Wallace, who used to be oh the quarterback? Gosh, your, oh my gosh, I, I love about Bo. Bo Wallace. Oh, he was like America's <laughs> sweetheart. He looked like Sunshine from Remember the Titans with the hair. And you know, this dart rem- reminds me of a little bit, but uh, you know, I I like dart. Obviously, I'm gonna need to watch a little bit of more of them. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to evaluate through hearing about practices and stuff like that. You know, uh, Kiffin was talking about how each of them need to be more aware of pressure. They've taken a, a little bit too many sacks and stuff like that in practice. Um, but I think when all is said and done. To me, it feels like Dart has to be the guy, or you have a better chance of making it uh, to the top. Yeah. You know, you your, maybe your, have your a ceiling's floor. a lot higher with yeah, Dart. Yeah, with Altmaier. Uh, but Dart is your chance to, like, go win it all, is what yeah. it seems like to me. Well, especially, like, Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss, they were number two in the transfer portal. That's what they're ranked in getting recruits. And Dart's a transfer. So he's big on using the transfer portal. A number of their guys, Malik Heath, is, is another is a wide receiver, another transfer guy. Their whole roster seems to be really stacked with transfers. So he's definitely incentivized to get these guys on the field. Because what you want if you're a program like Ole Miss who can't really compete with the Alabamas and, you know, the Auburns and LSUs and with the, sh- the sheer recruiting in that part of the country – getting transfers is important. So I think that's kind of that extra edge that is going to give Dart the final advantage and final push. But no matter what, this is going to be a really exciting Ole Miss team. They're always exciting to watch. And it's going to be a really, really, really cool year. Hope we get a chance to make it out to Oxford. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a real, real fun year for Ole Miss.